Geologists detail the likely site of San Andreas Fault's next major quake. This is an article by Utah State University. And it was last year before the Ridgecrest earthquakes, of course. It's dated June 26, 2018. Geologists identify the San Andreas Fault's Dermid Ladder structure, Dermid, D U R M I D, Dermid Ladder structure a nearly 15.5 mile long sheared zone with two nearly parallel master faults and hundreds of smaller rung-like rung cross faults that could be the site of the region's next major earthquake. Back in 1905, the Colorado River, swollen with heavy rain and snowmelt, surged into a dry lake bed along California's South uh, San Andreas Fault and formed the Salton Sea. The floodwaters submerged most of the small town of Salton along with nearby tribal lands. The inundation also covered a key seismically active stretch of the San Andreas Fault's southern tip in silt, hiding evidence of its potential volatility. Utah State University geologist Suzanne Janik began hypothesizing the location and geometry of the sediment obscured fault zone more than a decade ago. After securing funding from Southern California Earthquake Center in 2011, she along with USU graduate student Dan Markowski and colleagues embarked on the painstaking task of documenting the uplifted highly folded and faulted area with geologic mapping and analysis. The geologist's persistence revealed a nearly 15 and a half mile long sheared zone in, with two nearly parallel master faults and hundreds of smaller rung-like cross faults. It was like a ladder type of thing, dubbed the Dermond Ladder by the team. The well-organized structure could be the site of the region's next major earthquake. Janik Markowski, SU, S, USU colleague Jim Evans, Patricia Perso of Louisiana State University, and Miles Kenny of California, Kenny Geoscience, reported findings in the June 19, 2012 online issue of Lithosphere, a publication of the Geological Society of America. The discovery of the Dermid Ladder reveals the southern tip of the San Andreas Falls changes fairly gradually into the ladder-like Brawley seismic zone. The structure tends northwards, extending from the well-known main trace of the San Andreas Fault along the Salton Sea's northeastern shore to the newly identified east shoreline fault zone on the San Andreas opposite edge. Quote, we now have critical evidence about the possible nucleation site of a ne the next major earthquake on the San Andreas Fault, end quote, says Janik, professor of USU's Department of Geology. Quote, that possible nucleation site was thought to be a small area near Bombay Beach, California. Bombay Beach is uh, one of the cities on Salton Seas. It's now about, it was on beachfront property. Now it's about, uh, what is it, half a mile away from the water. So, near Bombay Beach, California, but our work suggests that may be an addition longer, additional longer fuse south of the Dermid Ladder within the 37-mile long Brawley Seismic Zone. Future earthquakes in that zone, or near the San Andreas Fault, could potentially trigger a cascade of earthquakes leading to the overdue major quake scientists expect along the southern San Andreas Fault Zone, she, as she said. Now, we are having quake swarms on the west of Salton Sea, that is the southern end of San Andreas. Basically, San Andreas runs right through it, and that's where we're getting uh, tremendous quake swarms now. We'll take a look at that after this. Now, fortunately, the northern continuation of the newly identified East shoreline strand of the San Andreas Fault is farther away from more major populated centers than we first thought, Janik says. The fault lies along the eastern edge of California Valley, 
Couchella Valley. In addition, the broken rock throughout the latter structure could damper ground shaking associated with the next large earthquake. On the other hand, she says the Dermid Ladder presents an increase in the surface rupture hazard in Dermid Hill, and if the Brawley seismic zone is involved, the next large earthquake might be slightly larger than scientists previously expected. Among the tools Janik and her team used to identify the fault were high resolution aerial photography and false color imaging. Many months of field work were critical to the research, she says. We relied on this imagery to integrate the field study into our map of the complex ladder structure. Geophysical imaging and drilling confirmed the northward extent and identified the tilting fault zone and the subsurface near Palm Springs. On the ground and to your eyes, all of the tan colored sediment looks the same, Janet says. But further analysis with digital imaging tools highlighted the slight color differences of distinctive marker units. These materials, these markers, she said, allowed the team to recognize the hundreds of faults that displace the three to zero, uh, two million year old sedimentary rocks of the Dermid ladder. The new maps and analysis reveal the ladder structure, which is a particular type of step over where overlapping fault strands have many connecting cross faults, Genex says. It's not clear how past earthquakes interacted with this structure and that makes its further behavior difficult to predict. Until now, the main trace of the San Andreas Fault has been the only well-studied active fault in this area. She says we need further study of the Dermid Ladder, the East Shoreline Fault and other fault zones of this area to identify the potential for surface faulting hazards ground sharing and uh, I think shaking should be there, ground shaking and cascading ruptures to determine how to mitigate the risk posed by these important structures. This is on Science Daily. It's by Utah State University, Suzanne Janik, Daniel Murkowski, James P. Evans, Patricia Brousseau, Miles Kennedy, Dermid Ladder Structure, and its implications for the nucleation sites for the next magnitude 7.5 7 earthquake and higher on the San Andreas Fault or Brawley Seismic Zone in Southern California. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.